So what is day one of basic training like? So for today's video, I just wanted to talk to you guys about what day one of basic training is like and what you can expect from basically the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, that first day of basic training. Not reception, but the first day of actual basic training. I've maybe talked about it a little bit before in my very, very old video where I talked about day one through day 17, basically red phase of basic training. I cover pretty briefly some of the things that I'm gonna talk about here. So if you guys wanna check out that video, you can check it out, probably link it up or something, maybe down in the description. In this video, I just really wanna concentrate on day one and just like basically fill you guys in on my experience, exactly what we did. For those of you who don't know, I went to basic training at Fort Benning. I am not an infantryman, I was a 25 Bravo, uh, currently going through the ROTC program to be a officer, and I will be a second lieutenant this May 2018. So I used to be enlisted, and now I am no longer enlisted anymore, but that's a little background on me where I went to basic training and so what this kind of experience is going to be related to. So if you are going to Fort Benning for basic training, you're going to be going to this place called 30th AG. So basically starting from the beginning, the night before or, or super early that morning, you're going to make sure you have all of your stuff, everything packed and ready to go to basic training. So all the gear and everything that you're issued at reception, that is all going to be packed into probably one, maybe two duffel bags, depending on how they do it. For us, everything was packed into one duffel bag. You had your second duffel bag inside of that, and then everything else was in a laundry bag. So that morning at reception, when you're about to leave for basic training, what you're basically going to do is make sure all the barracks and everything where you've been staying for the past week or however long you were at reception, you gotta make sure that those are cleaned and ready to go. And then in the morning, sometime probably around five o'clock, zero or 500, you are going to be all downstairs wherever your gear and stuff was, and you're gonna be sitting on your gear waiting for the drill sergeants to come up. You're gonna be kind of talking around and stuff. Some of the drill sergeants that were kind of like over your little company at reception might be saying, hey, if you have any final questions, you know, now's the time to ask. So you're gonna be kind of talking back and forth with them. It'll be a pretty chill time with those drill sergeants because those drill sergeants who are working at reception, they're just like, you're literally about to leave. And so they're like, hey, if you have any last questions, you know, if you have some good drill sergeants there, they're probably gonna let you do that. And it's gonna be like a really suspenseful moment for you because you're gonna be waiting for your new drill sergeant to come up. And then all of a sudden, you're gonna see these buses, you're gonna drive by, they're gonna park. And then all of a sudden, here comes these drill sergeants. And you're looking at them, you're like, oh gosh, that dude looks scary. I hope he's not my drill sergeant or whatever. And then you actually get to meet your drill sergeants. You don't like meet them, but you get to visually see who the guys are. They're gonna be giving you a hard time over the next several months. At least for us, what happened next after our drill sergeant showed up is they basically talked to us for just a few quick minutes. And basically what they said was, hey, if you don't feel like you're ready to go to basic training, if you wanna stay here, if you wanna go home, if you wanna leave, now is the time to go, which is completely true. When you're at reception and you quit, if you want to go home, that is the time to go home, not when you get to basic training, like that basic training portion. Because as soon as you get on that bus and you go to basic training and then you quit, you're gonna be there a lot longer than if you were to quit at reception. So that's kind of what they said, like, hey, if, if you wanna quit, if you wanna go home, now is the time. The time to quit is not after you get on the bus, right? So that's something to keep in mind. If for some reason any of you guys wanna quit, quit at reception, don't quit when you're at basic training because it's gonna be a lot more worse for you. Because if you quit at reception, you might just be a holdover for a week, two weeks, maybe three weeks. Some people might be longer than that, but that's a lot more uncommon. If you quit at basic training, you're gonna be there for basically the rest of the cycle, if not longer. If you're lucky, you could probably be there for five, six, seven weeks. And so now you're sitting on the bus and it is game time. You are literally about to step off the bus and basic training is going to start because as soon as that bus parks itself, your drill sergeant is gonna come up on there and he's gonna you know, do what probably most of you already know because you've probably already looked up other videos, but they're gonna get on that bus and they're gonna yell at everybody and say, you got like five seconds to get off of the bus. And of course, you can't have you know 50 people get off of the bus in five seconds, that's impossible. So a little tidbit of advice for you guys here though, because this is when the shark attack is gonna happen, day one of basic training, and you wanna do your best to not stand out during the shark attack. Now, as far as basic training as a whole, if you wanna stand out, if you wanna to try to be a platoon leader, if you wanna to try to be in a leadership position, you are going to have to stand out, but 
don't stand out day one because if you do that they're just gonna they're basically going to be on you a lot more you're going to get yelled at more you're going to be swarmed by drill sergeants so one of the things that you really don't want to do the first thing that you really don't want to do when you're at basic training is be the last person off of the bus once you're getting off of the bus what they're going to do the drill sergeants they're going to be yelling at you they're gonna be kind of directing you yelling you in a certain direction so like if you've ever you know seen like sheep being herded you know the the sheep herders they're not like literally telling people where to go they're kind of like just knocking them and trying to get the whole sheep the herd of sheep to go to a certain direction well, that's kind of how it's going to be at base to training day one whenever you're getting off the bus because all of the new recruits all the privates and stuff you're not going to have a clue where you're supposed to go you're going to be parked and this weird place probably some weird driveway or it's some weird building and you're like which building is mine i have no clue but the drill sergeants are going to be basically yelling at you to get you to go into a certain direction and when you get over there you're going to form up into your platoons and this is really where the shark attack begins and this is also where i tell you guys to not bring a lot of stuff to basic training because some people will bring extra clothes they'll bring extra stuff for some crazy reason, even though you don't need extra clothes or anything really, all you really need is like 50 bucks, your phone, your phone charger for the couple times you're gonna get to call home, and that's really just about it, and your wallet and stuff like that. You don't need extra clothes. You don't need extra anything really. So when you're in the platoon formation the very first time, the drill sergeants are going to have everybody hold all of their gear above their head. I've mentioned this several times on my channel, and it's just the truth. It's gonna happen to everybody. That's kind of like the thing that they do now because the shark attack isn't as bad, at least from what I've heard or from what you know prior service people from 15, 20 years ago or whatever. The shark attack was a lot worse then than it is now. The worst thing about it now is honestly the holding your stuff over your head. I actually hurt my trap muscle on my left back right here. It has been hurting me. It's been an issue ever since day one of basic training because we were doing that for so long. I don't know, 30, 45 minutes just holding it up just constantly. Didn't have a single break holding up a lot of weight. I don't know how much it was, but holding up a lot of weight. And I hurt my shoulder right here and it has been hurting me ever since literally since day one of basic training i've got this issue and it gives me problems whenever i'm doing ruck marches and just doing all this crazy stuff so it is a very stressful thing to do for the shark attack now even still but you know before all of the hype that people seem to hype up the shark attack it's really not as bad as people might think you know whenever you get done with your first day of basic training you're going to be like that really wasn't that bad so the shark attack is basically now you're in that initial platoon formation you're holding all of your gear over your head they might be doing other things like you know having you in the front leaning rest position telling you to stand up and get in the front leaning rest position and stand up something that they made us do was just literally pick up our stuff and put it down and pick up our stuff and put it down and pick up our stuff and put it down and you're going to be doing a lot of push-ups and you're going to be doing a lot of just random stuff basically holding your gear over your head setting things down picking things up and doing a bunch of push-ups that's what you're gonna be looking at doing for the shark attack you might do some kind of squatting positions and stuff but it's not going to be really crazy now when you're going through this this is also where the drill sergeants are going to be swarming you so if you are a weaker soldier and you can't hold your stuff off over your head if you can at least you're not supposed to balance it on your head so like if you're holding it up it shouldn't be resting on your head and if it does they'll come they'll come over at you and they'll yell at you but at the very least you should do that and not actually drop it or set it down so if you're holding all your gear over your head and then you drop it the drill sergeant's gonna be like oh gosh we got to get at this guy so one drill sergeant's gonna come over to you he's gonna start yelling at you then another drill sergeant who's like oh i'm bored right now or you know i need to find a private to yell at he's like oh that drill sergeant's yelling at somebody i'm gonna come over there too and then another drill sergeant is gonna be like oh look they look like they're having fun i'm gonna come over there and yell at this private too and before you know it you dropped your bag on the ground and then you have five or six drill sergeants just literally you know you've seen the videos and stuff where people are just right in your face and it's just for no real reason and they're just telling you to pick up your bag and then put it down and another drill sergeant is telling you something opposite and they're just confusing the crap out of you and that's kind of how basic training is for day one during the shark attack it's just some physical activities that really in theory aren't that difficult but when you have to do them for such a long amount of time and then if you mess up or if you do something that is when the drill sergeants are going to come at you that's kind of what it is so if you're holding your back above your head if you're doing push-ups and then you can't do push-ups anymore they're going to come at you and be like why are you so weak blah 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 why are you here if you can't do a push-up blah blah, blah all, like, all this crazy stuff 
we're only making you do two push-ups and then but in reality they're making you do a whole bunch of them they're only counting to one and zero or whatever and they're just restarting all the time so they're going to be just playing games and stuff like that but that's going to be the first I'd say hour to two hours of your basic training experience. And then after that, you're gonna be going up to your barracks. Your drill sergeants are going to give all of you where your bunks are at. They're gonna tell you where your lockers are at and stuff like that. And then they're gonna have like a little talk with you, right? So you're gonna go up to your room, they're gonna talk to you, they're gonna say, you know, the normal spiel that drill sergeants say, where at least my drill sergeant was like, my name is drill sergeant, first name drill, last name sergeant, and they say stuff like that. They kind of just tell you like, you're not going to say anything, you're not going to talk, you're only going to address us as drill sergeant, begin everything with that. So they're gonna do a, a little just talking to you, I guess. And so for us, after that little talking to from the drill sergeants, we put up all of our gear and our wall lockers. Before we got actually issued anything, any of the real equipment there, we did go to breakfast. You're probably gonna get smoked before and after breakfast. Then whenever you get back, what's gonna happen is uh, getting issued some more gear. So some of the gear that I'm talking about, when you're at reception, you're gonna be getting issued clothes and stuff like that. You're gonna be getting issued your uniform. It's just some of those things that you're going to be able to keep. But at basic training, you're gonna get equipment. You're going to get rucksacks, you're going to get assault packs, you're going to get Kevlar, you're going to get, you know, some other things, some gloves, uh, flicks, right? So you're going to be getting issued this stuff and you're going to have to sign off for it. So the majority of the day at basic training, the first day is just going to be signing off on your gear and then getting smoked in between times of doing stuff, right? You might also be going to a class. So in my case, we got issued a little bit of gear. Then we went to go do a class. And I believe like the first class or something might have been OPSEC, operational security, some basic stuff. So it's not like a really a class where you learn stuff. Kind of we just call it a class because you go into like a classroom environment and the drill sergeant just talk to you. There's probably a PowerPoint presentation. So you're gonna do one or two of those the first day of basic training. Then after that, you might have lunch at this time. And you might go to lunch, you're probably gonna get smoked before and after lunch, and then you're gonna get issued some more gear. So you're gonna basically be doing that the entire time and you're gonna be signing off for your gear. Now the reason this is important and the reason that this takes up the majority of your day at basic training is because in the military, in the army, whenever you get issued gear, you have to check all the serial numbers, you have to fill out paper for the gear, and you have to sign it, and you have to date it, and so it's a really long process when you have to do this with a whole lot of people. Uh, there's also smoking and stuff going on throughout the entire process, so if you're filling out the paperwork and people just keep screwing up, the drill sergeants might just smoke you right then and there because, you know, it's day one of basic training, and they're going to figure out every single reason or whatever way they can get you to get in the front leg to rest position, they're gonna get you to do that. So the majority of the day is gonna be in classes, it's going to be getting issued your equipment, and it's gonna be getting smoked, right? So aside from that, you're gonna be eating, and that's pretty much it. And also at some point throughout the day, whenever you're at basic training, it might be later in the day, it might be whenever you first get off of the buses, but at some point on day one of basic, you will get like a one minute phone call home, basically, just to be able to call your parents or call your significant other and say, hey, I made it to basic training, I love you, I gotta go, bye. That is what they told us to do. They gave us, sometimes they, they give people like a piece of paper and they just say to read it, which is, hey, such and such, you know, I made it to basic training, I'm okay, I'm not hurt, uh, this is my unit that I'm currently at, I love you, bye. And that's kind of, it's just gonna be a short conversation. You're really not gonna be talking to them. It's not even gonna be a conversation. So your first phone call that you have is going to be day one of basic and it's just going to be like a minute long it's not going to be long at all and this is also a point when some people ask me if people cry at basic training yes this is a point when some people will literally it's going to be a lot more common than you think are going to cry <laughs> the first time that they call home and i'm laughing because i just personally i think it's kind of funny i understand you miss your family and stuff but i don't think this is something that you should really cry over. A lot of times it is younger soldiers, so soldiers who are 17, 18 years old, they've never been away from home before, and they're just like, what the heck did I get myself into? I'm crying, mom, I love you, I don't wanna be here, and that's kind of, you know, if they do get an extra 30 seconds of talk, that's kind of what it's gonna be. But yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it. You know, give or take a couple of things for your basic training experience, but when you're there, it's just gonna be a lot of admin stuff. You know, some other thing that you might have happen to you will be your drills artists are gonna 
kind of tell you some of the rules and some of the things that's going to go on. They're going to set up fire guard. They're going to set up those kinds of things. You're not going to get into uh, squads. You're not going to get into a legit formation right away because how they did it for us anyways was you were in a formation in alphabetical order. Then we later assigned squad leaders. We assigned team leaders. You assign the platoon leader and the assistant platoon leader or the PG or APG, which would be platoon guide and assistant platoon guide, depending on what you guys call them. But those are things that are gonna happen later on at basic training. There's not gonna be any real teaching day one at basic. They're not gonna be, all right, this is how you march. This is how you do such and such. This is how you stand at attention. This is how you do parade rest. They're not gonna be teaching you guys any of that day one. So bottom line, it's not going to be as bad or as stressful as a lot of you guys might think as far as the shark attack and all that stuff goes. Basically, if you just get there, you just do your very best to not do anything at all whatsoever to stand out, period, during the first day of basic training during the whole shark attack phase. So the drill sergeants are just looking for things, no matter what, to just find something to smoke you, to smoke the entire platoon, and it's going to happen a lot little the tiniest little things you know they're going to give you impossible tasks but it's going to be the tiniest little things that the drill sergeants are just going to smoke the entire platoon so that's going to be it for this video i hope you guys have a little bit more of a general understanding of what's going to happen day one of basic training again it's not going to be as big of a deal as some of you might think it's going to be pretty basic you know as long as you can just stay alive and just make it through the smoking process you're going to be good to go and as far as the things that i've told you guys in the past one of the reasons that you want to be in really good shape whenever you get to basic training is because a lot of people the first day of basic are going to be super like just extremely sore the next day and the next day day two of basic is going to be kind of a repeat of the first day you just subtract the bus ride and the shark attack it's going to be kind of a repeat of the first day which is you get possibly issued a little bit more gear some more classes and you're getting smoked just in between it just for every little thing. So if you're in good shape, if you're doing a lot of push-ups, if you're doing a lot of planks, and you're doing a lot of exercises and stuff like that, whenever the drill sergeants are smoking you the first day, you're gonna be a lot better off the second day and you're not gonna be so sore or even sore at all after the smoking process, whereas the majority of people will, and it just makes day two a lot more miserable. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you can hit that like button. That would be awesome. If you wanna stick around for some more of my videos, you can hit that subscribe button. I believe I'm gonna talk about pretty soon here, the last week of basic training. I've had somebody request that. So the last week of basic training and kind of what that is like. I'll be talking about that soon, so make sure you guys stick around for that. If you're not following me on social media, the link is right here. If you want to follow me, feel free, Instagram and Snapchat. But I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys later. Trump.